Hey guys, Stock Saturday and a slightly green week for me, underperforming the markets though. Uh, I'm up about 1.2%, uh, S&P's done a bit better and the Nasdaq's done incredibly well. Um, not really sure what's, uh, what all this is about, the uh, US debt ceiling is sort of still rumbling on, still sort of seeming to be causing issues, um, but yeah, Nasdaq seems unfazed, tech stock's doing really, really well. And uh, I'm not really sort of participating in most of that. Uh, sort of my small holding in uh, Alphabet and uh, Broadcom and uh, sort of Meta platforms doing okay, but uh, sort of a lot of my other stuff isn't really uh, connected to that. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll come back to the portfolio. A couple of um, of changes, but yeah, looking at some earnings. So we had 10 cents first quarter results come out, all uh, looking pretty good. Uh, total revenue up quite a bit from uh, first quarter last year and up from last quarter. Um, everything sort of largely up except uh, international games, which was slightly down on uh, last quarter, but that was the uh, Christmas quarter. So that's fair enough. Um, well up on last year. And yeah, everything doing pretty well. Profits uh, well up from last quarter and last year. Back up above the 2021 highs as well after the uh, sort of lockdowns and the, the slump. So that's pretty good. Uh, music subscription revenue up 30% year on year, which is good. Um, up on paying users and on uh, average revenue per user, which is good because the... Uh, music subscription hasn't been sort of going all that well it's uh, sort of a, an area i'm quite happy for them to to have but it's sort of not been particularly profitable so yeah that's good to see um domestic games doing well as well and um, they're sort of honor of kings uh, still don't really sort of see the appeal but uh, it's doing very well um and uh, crossfire they're uh, sort of Call of Duty for the non-Westerners, uh, doing pretty well, so that's good. Lots of other games we don't really sort of see over over the Western side. Uh, Valorant though, doing pretty well, uh, which is one of their sort of larger games for the Western side. And then PUBG Mobile, um, somehow they uh, they have that, and that's very popular. And balance sheet looking pretty solid as well. They've gone uh, net cash, uh, where they have been sort of reasonable amount of net debt. Uh, nothing to get worried about, but it's just nice to see them sort of swing into uh, net cash. I doubt it'll stay that way. They uh, don't tend to sort of hold a great deal of cash. They love uh, reinvesting it sort of back into other things, which I quite like. Uh, they sort of fairly good capital allocators in my opinion from uh, looking over the sort of past investments and yeah one sort of <laughs> thing that i do still notice um the value of the shareholdings in listed investee companies uh, they're saying is 69 billion dollars which i would think puts to bed uh, the idea that they don't own tesla anymore because 4% of, um, I think they would own about 4% of Tesla, uh, which would be sort of $23 billion. And so sort of with everything else they own uh, in listed companies, I would think that would come to more than that. Um, so it was a bit strange. They sort of recently did a, an interview, I think a couple of months ago, sort of saying they're really bullish on Tesla. And it would seem a bit strange to sort of come out with that if they'd sort of sold the the shares, you know, three, four years ago, as sort of what I'd read before, and not bought any back. Um, surprised they would sort of mention that about Tesla, but maybe they still own it. If you look at sort of um, uh, other sites and sort of 13Fs uh, from before, nothing ever says that they've sold it, but the more recent data uh, sort of says that they don't own it. Um, but then... There is stuff like Snapchat and Activision and that sort of thing that isn't on there as well. And I can't imagine they would have sold those because they sort of bought that for, uh, or they bought certainly a bit of Ubisoft and Activision for publishing rights in China. So it would seem strange for them to have uh, sold off those. So yeah, maybe they, uh, they do still own it, but yeah, $48 billion in private companies and $69 billion in listed 
uh, I thought was reasonably okay. Would kind of hope it to uh, to be a bit higher than that, but I guess it's got knocked down in the last year. So Stag Industrials first quarter uh, was a few weeks ago actually, but I didn't uh, didn't really sort of get round to it. I was reporting on other things, um, Stag and sort of uh, the other REITs tend, don't tend to have a huge amount of news. It's uh, just sort of fairly regular uh, reporting. They've uh, achieved fifty five cents of core funds from operations per share. Uh, an increase of 3.8% on last year's uh, first quarter. So that's the metric really that uh, he's best to keep an eye on. Um, and yeah, it's a small increase, nothing huge. Um, but yeah, they're a fairly sort of steady company. Uh, would have hoped for a little bit more. But certainly in the real estate market at the moment, that's, uh, you have to be sort of happy with steady, I think. 97.6% uh, uh, occupancy rate on the total portfolio, which is very good. Uh, a long way ahead of sort of commercial uh, real estate offices and that sort of thing. Not something I would I would be wanting to be in. Uh, industrial side, sort of your distribution centres and uh, logistics places is uh, a far more bullish sector for me. So, yeah, all looking good. Uh, balance sheet sort of mostly unchanged uh, it would have been nice to sort of see uh, debt not be uh, going up uh, debt hasn't really been going up the uh, credit facility went up slightly but uh, unsecured notes come down so yeah nothing uh, nothing too much not quite the same with Vici uh, doing a reasonable amount better uh, they have been sort of uh, issuing a lot of shares and uh, debt so you can't really take the Overall year-on-year -year numbers, that's a little bit silly. Um, again, on a sort of per share basis for everything is the best way. Um, adjusted funds from operations uh, up 18.6% uh, year-on-year to uh, 53 cents. And expanding into Canada, which is uh, interesting, sort of expanding certainly out of Las Vegas, but even out of America, which they hadn't been sort of doing up until now, uh, too much of. He has sort of, there was an interview with um, the CEO, um, Edward Petoniak, and he sort of mentioned quite a few bits in uh, things in Europe they were interested in, even sort of a quick soundbite about uh, centre parks in the UK, which uh, would be an unusual buy for them, but uh, always very popular. Enormous amount of land, obviously, with those, so... Yeah, not really sure what they would be worth, but it'd be interesting to sort of see them branch out into that. Um, I suppose they count it as not a million miles away. It's uh, entertainment products. So, yeah, all uh, all looking reasonably good with uh, Vici. Obviously, uh, drastic changes in uh, the balance sheet, but that's uh, hoping that these buys are going to be worth it. So an awful lot of uh, debt and dilution happened over the last year. Um, but they call it value accretive, as they say. So everything on a, a per share basis is up. And news-wise, there wasn't really uh, a huge amount of news that piqued my interest. Uh, car registrations up from um, last year in the UK. I think this had uh, already came out before. That's April numbers. Uh, EU um, CPI sort of pretty much all as expected um, and the uh, housing starts sort of as expected pretty much um, the job numbers for uh, the US sort of slightly um, or jobless claims rather um, slightly better than expected so unemployment sort of presumably will be uh, coming down yet again not uh, going into sort of recession as expected just yet yeah that was basically uh, basically it for the news fairly quiet uh, more coming next week i believe got more uh, inflation numbers and the pce uh, proper inflation numbers for the us so yeah we'll see what uh, comes of all that next week so portfolio-wise, all of the gain basically has come in the invest account. Uh, quite a few uh, gainers in here. Process uh, doing reasonably okay with uh, $0.10 cents rise. 
uh, Stellantis up a bit, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor up quite a bit, over 10%, um, Hymax doing okay, about 8%, same with uh, Meta Platforms, kind of getting a bit sort of light-headed about uh, Meta Platforms now, sort of 245 uh, as I said, on the earnings, they're still expecting um, Reality Labs to be sort of growing losses all of this year. And uh, with revenue not even rising, uh, I do kind of see that as sort of, um, you basically need that to pay off basically at sort of at 245 now when, uh, you know, it's sort of, you know, high 150s, 160s, you kind of feel like you're getting of the reality labs potential thrown in for nothing almost but yeah i think where it is now it's sort of pricing in a reasonable amount of that doing well so i don't know sort of considering maybe um taking a bit of profit maybe not selling out of it entirely but uh, we'll see on that um broadcom doing really well up uh, about eight percent i think for the week that's uh, including the fx that's about 70 percent green now so i don't know i think i'll uh, just hold on to it it's uh, growing dividend growing earnings and everything the uh, the gain seems justified um what else have we got uh, micron again similar to uh, broad uh, similar to meta platforms really they're uh, sort of I think piggybacking off the AI trade, uh, sort of reading a lot of um, a lot of reports saying that the AI uh, chips and sort of growth of that industry is going to need an awful lot of memory. Micron is sort of fairly well placed to to get a lot of that, but you know you're looking at 2025 from the looks of it. Uh, they're saying all this year is going to be a reasonably bad loss. Uh, next year they're looking at sort of 50 cent um, earnings per share so you're looking at like 130 uh, forward price to earnings for 2024 um, again though the that is analyst estimates and they've been very very wrong on uh, micron before i think they had next year down at like four dollars um, not so long ago uh, only a few sort of a few months ago and they've cut it down to 50 cents so yeah, maybe that sort of comes rocketing up uh, for next year, even during this year, and uh, they'll be wrong. But, I mean, even if it went back to $4 for next year, it's still, you know, 17, 18 um, PE for a semiconductor's hardware company. Um, and, you know, it's more than TSMC, uh, more than sort of even AMD, I believe. So, yeah, kind of uh, considering... Sort of selling uh, selling micron off but we'll see and yeah google doing uh, reasonably well for the week so yeah it's all uh, all happening in the investor account no real no real losers all week the isa is where uh, my sort of activity has been um well sylvania platinum still sort of struggling with uh, low rhodium prices that's been taking a bit of a knock um but nothing sort of too bad uh, treasuries i've sold off a bit of treasury or a bit more treasuries uh, another two thousand pounds gone and i've put that into a new position um equinox gold uh, put about 1500 pound into those and um, this is a sort of well i can't call them a junior miner because they're mining 600,000 ounces of gold uh, they don't do any silver at all unlike uh, my other sort of recent purchases um, but they do have a plan uh, over the next sort of hopefully couple of years to get to a million ounces of gold a year um, at a sort of slightly well much higher cost than the rest uh, i think they're looking at 1500 to 1600 dollars um, all in cost on gold so they're not all that profitable unless uh, gold really does rise a bit more um, but yeah for sort of one and a half billion dollars um, I think that is a huge deal potentially so I've put some into them um, and I put the rest into um, Kur mining um, so up that to about the same size as Equinox now so I'm going further into gold and silver miners 
for sure. And then, of course, my uh, 3X NASDAQ short is doing horrendously with uh, NASDAQ doing well. And 3X short NVIDIA is basically a write-off. Um, there's only a couple hundred pound. And I keep thinking if we do get a sort of a reasonably sharp recession or sort of pullback, then that may sort of just rock it up a little bit and uh, sort of claw back some of that loss. Don't see the point in sort of selling that for, for 200 quid now. But, yeah, see where that goes. I think Silvergate is uh, basically bust now. It's getting removed from exchanges. So, yeah, maybe I should have sold it off. But I kind of thought there might have been some assets there at least to, to sell off. But there you go. I kind of bought them with uh, Argo blockchain money thinking they were going bust. So I'm just kind of treating it as if uh, Argo did go bust. Although they do seem to be uh, really struggling at the moment anyway, so still the potential of that. And no change in the uh, IG trading account, that's sort of uh, basically as is. CleanSpark doing reasonably okay, considering Bitcoin prices are, are a bit rough. Uh, Pan American Silver down, um, and SLI Mining uh, slightly down. Um, and no real uh, change in the Chinese tech. Um, I am sort of, I do have a couple of uh, companies on the watch list potentially to be putting into Interactive Brokers because that's the only place they have them. Um, a Polish miner, uh, KGHM, been sort of looking into over the last uh, week or two. Um, they're sort of very large in uh, copper, but also silver sort of as a byproduct of mining that copper. So it's basically all in copper and silver which is a an interesting mix i sort of normally say that i like to keep industrial and precious metals um, separate but you don't find all that many uh, copper miners at a, a reasonable um, valuation and they are very cheap at the moment so yeah they're looking uh, doing more research into kghm and more research into um, Embracer Group still uh, haven't been able to sort of pluck up the courage to pull the trigger on them. Uh, sort of gaming potential looks really good, and they own the Lord of the Rings um, franchise basically, so or IP, so uh, games coming from uh, Amazon and uh, potentially sort of rights on. Uh, on some of the TV shows, I believe, uh, but not films. So, yeah, I think all in all, um, the Tomb Raider game coming as well with uh, Amazon Games. So, yeah, really, uh, really positive, but not been able to buy yet. But I'm thinking of uh, sort of throwing a fair bit of money into interactive brokers and sort of buying more options, potentially buying uh, a little bit of those too. So we'll see where that goes. So leave your thoughts in the comments below and like and subscribe. See you soon.